Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2020 Mazda 3 and I'm going to be quickly showing you how to install uh, a Nextbase dash cam using the official Nextbase wiring kit straight to the fuse box so that it goes on and off with the car's ignition. So first things first, let's have a look at what tools I'll be using to get this job done. Pretty basic really, some cable snips, plastic leverage tool that's probably the most important thing in the toolkit use this to leave a plastic trim and basically it's to stop it dinting and putting marks in it if you use a screwdriver or such like you normally make horrible mess of your plastic trim so these are about a pound ebay amazon car shops that sort of place a couple of cable ties there just to bulk the cable up show you those in a minute what i'm using them for multimeter or test probe screwdriver one of those screwdrivers that lights up when you touch the top of a fuse to tell you that it's on or off live or not live some electrical tape some long nose pliers because sometimes fuses are recessed quite far and I use them to pull the fuses out rather than the crappy little plastic tool that comes with the car. So, what do we get in the dash cam hardwire kit? Well, we get all this. We get a replacement power cable, this one terminating in mini USB. Other end terminating in a power with a bullet connector on the end and an earth with a spade. So you can put that to a chassis earth, I'll show you where shortly. You get some fuse spurs, which are basically doublers for a fuse socket. So you pull one fuse out and it doubles it into two. So in other words, if we look at the end of this thing, it's got a two or a three amp there to run the camera. And then the spare socket here is to put the fuse in that you pull out of your fuse box to run the original circuit for the car. You then shove this in where that came out. I'll show you that very shortly. The other end's got a female bullet connector on it. And that's basically plug into your power cable like so. On this car off the top of my head, I think it's a mini fuse, I'll have a look shortly. So probably that one, this is an old commercial size, don't really need that, probably not that one either. So we put those to one side. Speaking of fuses, where are they on this car? Well, there's your glove box guys. This is a right hand drive by the way, and it's here. So there's like a thing. There we go, there's your fuses. So what we're gonna do now, is start preparing this cable. So we get a ferrite filter in the kit, which is just help suppress DAB radio interference. Now, if you fit in a rear camera, more than likely, you will have terrible DAB re reception after you've done it. Not all cars are affected, but most are. There's not really an answer for it at the moment, so you won't know until you've tried it. The manufacturers say the cabling is up to spec for shielding and stuff, but it's a massive problem. If you Google it, you'll see what I mean. I haven't got an answer for you other than disconnect the rear camera or lose your DAB. Take your pick. So this pops open on a hinge, and we're going to put the cable through the middle of it, wrap it around the back of it, and out again. Okay, there's your ferrite filter fitted. So there's the clips lock, the hinge on the back. So you basically open it round the back of it, Lip it through the middle of it, round the back of it again, and out, and then snap shut, like so. Now what I'm going to do is pop a cable tie or two on the cable so that it uh, has a bit of a... It bulks it up a bit, stop it dropping down from the top of the headline. You don't want to be driving along, hit the pot on, and then all of a sudden the cable's dropped down in front of the passenger. No good. So we're going to wrap this round, snip it off, tuck it up above the headlining. Okay, there's the cables tucked up out of the way. Ignore the other one, guys. That's for a rear camera. And yes, it may not work. I don't sell these things. I just install them. So we will see. So that's the cable tucked up above the headlining. It's quite soft. So don't go at it like a bull in a china shop. Just carefully ease your fingers and tuck the cable all the way along until you get to the screen pillar here. Now, there's an airbag behind this. And all you've got to do, basically, is pull the rubber trim off ease it forward it'll click and then pop the cable behind the airbag the airbag runs downwards you just like a sort of floppy curtain you just sort of put it behind it and then down run it down here basically there's an end plastic cap here we're going to pop that off and we're going to end up down here at the fuse box to gain better access to this area where the fuse box is what you can do is put your fingers underneath here and pull up this pops off as you can see pop that out of the way and then you can quite easily pull this away and get to your fuses. There's a plastic clip. I don't know if you can see it up here. We're going to pop that out so we can get this panel off altogether. Once you've popped out the plastic clip that was hard to see, which is one of these, look. So you pull the centre out of it. Yeah, so you pull the centre back and then pull and it pops out. You can then remove this, which opens up a nice... I think that's a 12 millimeter off the top of my head. I'll check that for you. Bolt so you can put your earth behind there and obviously nice easy access to the fuse box right here. 
just to update you guys, this is actually a 10 millimeter bolt, not a 12, as I originally said. Manufacturers seem to like altering stuff for no apparent reason. So we're going to take this out completely, like I say, slide our earth behind the plastic there, which I will just show you the earth. I've popped a ring terminal on them. I always do this. It makes a nicer connection. I don't like the flimsy little horseshoe that they come on. So we're going to take the bolt out, slide that under there, tighten it back up again. Uh, what we're doing basically is earthing out your multimeter, yeah, and get your test probe or your test probe screwdriver. We're going to use an accessory fuse, something like the radio or something non important, not ABS or ECU. Ignition off, zero voltage. Turn your ignition on, that fuse will light up with 12 volts, etc. What we're going to do with the ignition off is now grab that fuse, pull it out, pop it in our fuse spur, like so. And then we're going to pop that back in where the fuse came from. Paying attention to the orientation of the fuse so that it's the right way around for power to travel through. Now you can test your camera. We now have our camera fixed to the window screen using the 3M sticky pad rather than a suction cup because they don't stick to this black stuff very well. And there we are, powered up, no problems at all. And that is how you hardwire a dash cam into one of these vehicles. Be sure to check your fuse box layouts do change. And obviously you don't want any problems there. Get your multimeter out or your test probe screwdriver, etc. Any questions, contact your retailer. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.